Heather and Sean, thank you both for being here today. What is the uh, the story with the demise of the coal burning plants? I mean, for a long time, these seem to be kind of untouchable. Uh, environmentalists railed against them. And now we've had two, um, two big shutdowns or one shutdown and a repurposing. Why can't they survive? Currently. Well, there's there's definitely the environmental aspect. There has been a lot of pressure on them, and increasingly, um, the emissions from coal-fired plants are being regulated, which is, is one pressure. Um, but really, it's finances is the main reason that was cited in the planned shutdown of the Brayton Point uh, plant. And that pressure, that financial pressure, is coming from natural gas. Um, the market is just uh, full of cheap natural gas. And as a result, we've seen a, a major shift in where our power is coming from in New England in the past 10 or so years. In the year 2000, uh, according to ISO New England, our power was coming from a handful of different sources, coal, oil, nuclear, a little bit of natural gas, a little bit of renewables. By 2012, it was a completely different situation. Over half of our energy coming from natural gas, uh, about the same percentage still, about a third coming from nuclear, but coal and oil had all but disappeared, less than 5%. So are the coal plants that are still in the state, are they on the way out? I mean, are we going to see coal just vanish within the next five years or so? You know, it's, it's, it's anybody's guess, but yeah, that's, that's kind of um, what a lot of, especially the environmentalists are saying, is that this is the bellwether and that that's really the way it's going to go, especially as the regulations continue to tighten. Sean, do you agree? Well, it's hard to say. I don't want to make any predictions. Oh, but come on, certainly, prognosticate a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, certainly the pressure is being felt, and unless there's a change in the amount of uh, natural gas that's available, and that doesn't appear likely, then at least at this point. So, of course, the concern is there's too much reliance on natural gas. And if you start to eliminate some of these power plants that use other sources, you could run into a problem in the future. Now, this is natural gas that's coming in uh, very cheaply because of the, the so-called fracking boom, right? Right. Most of the natural gas that we're talking about uh, here in New England is coming from the Marcellus Shales in, in Pennsylvania. So it's the domestic fracking of natural gas. Um, are the pressures that the coal industry, or I shouldn't say coal industry, that coal burning plants are facing, right. are they similar to pressures that might help account for the um, Vermont Yankee shutdown, or is that a different case with different factors in play? Well, there are more factors, but Vermont Yankee, in the announcement that it would be shut down next year by its parent company, Entergy, uh, they did cite natural gas and, and, and what's happening with natural gas as a pressure on the plant, in addition to, I think they were looking at $50 million in upgrades. Now, are those upgrades that they had to think about because of the Fukushima disaster and because the spotlight was on them and they needed to take action? Or It's a variety of upgrades. Certainly, Fukushima is one of them. The NRC is looking at, is mandating certain changes because of Fukushima and the disaster there. What are the implications of those NRC mandates? That's Nuclear Regulatory Commission, for, uh, for viewers who may not know. What are the implications of those new mandates for um, the Pilgrim plant in Plymouth? I'm not sure exactly how much they're looking at in terms of upgrades at Plymouth, but certainly Plymouth is owned by the same uh, company that owns uh, Vermont Yankee, and they're in the same area, so they're also, Pilgrim is also competing with natural gas. That's putting pressure on Pilgrim. Entergy says they have no plans to close Pilgrim, but people who uh, oppose Pilgrim and oppose that particular plant and its location, they are hopeful that perhaps uh, Pilgrim could go the way of Vermont Yankee. And they didn't have any plans to close Vermont Yankee either, did they? That, didn't that come as a, something of a surprise? When that was it announced? came as a surprise because Entergy was fighting with the Vermont legislature in the courts. The Vermont legislature wanted to shut down or wanted, yeah. to, wanted to shut down Vermont Yankee, and Entergy fought that and they got a major ruling in Entergy's favor, and then soon thereafter they announced the closure. And so the idea probably was, let's make sure no changes come out of the courts that could jeopardize our other plants, such as Pilgrim. Now, uh, I want to talk a bit about this repurposing of the Salem Harbor power plant from coal burning into natural gas. That plant, I live on the North Shore, environmentalists up there have been complaining about that for decades, I think. Um, when the, the decision to go natural gas was announced for that facility, the state and the Patrick administration touted it as a really big uh, gain for environmentalists or environmentally minded people, um, saying, among other things, that this shift would be tantamount to taking more than 100,000 cars off the road. So is natural gas as much of a boon for environmentally aware residents of the state as, uh, as some people suggest, or not? Well, we're certainly hearing a lot of, of crowing from environmental groups, both about the closure of uh, Vermont Yankee and also with Brayton Point, various different concerns about those, those different um, power plants. 
but you know, n not what, that those were necessarily the reasons they were taken offline, but, but saying that that is a boon. Right. In the case of the natural gas transition, it's certainly at the point of burning the natural gas, it's much cleaner. Uh, Even actually at the plant itself. At the actual power point, when you're actually burning the oil or the gas or the coal or whatever it is you're burning, coal is much cleaner. But there's been natural research. Gas in is much the cleaner. natural gas oh. is much cleaner. But in, in recent years, there's uh, been some research showing that if you do more of a, a cradle to grave analysis, if you look at the whole process of actually getting uh, the fracked natural gas, in particular, out of the ground, there's a lot of energy that goes into the fracking process. There's also a lot of leakage of the methane, which is actually a much more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And so, if you account for that as well as the burning, the carbon footprint of natural gas could be as high or even higher than some of these more traditional fossil fuels. That's interesting. Yeah, I haven't heard really anything about that, uh, you know, amid the celebration about Salem going natural gas. I, I don't think I've heard too many people point out those considerations. And, and certainly me. at the local level, it's, it's, it's certainly much cleaner, you know, in terms of just in Salem when, when you're burning the natural right, gas. Right. Now, it's worth noting that here in Massachusetts, we don't do any fracking, so we're the beneficiaries of cheap fracked natural gas. Uh, it's good for consumers, but we're not doing it ourselves here, and there's actually a push to maybe ban it outright in the state. That's right. There's a bill currently in the state legislature to ban fracking or the processing of fracking waste in the state. Um, it would make us the second in the country to do that. Uh, Vermont has already banned fracking. New Jersey tried, but Governor Christie uh, vetoed it. And the Patrick administration, at least uh, Energy Secretary Rick Sullivan, has said that if that were to make it through the legislature, uh, they, would, they would not block it. All right, so really quickly, what do you guys think? Is it ethical for us to be the beneficiary of a technology like fracking and you know, pay less for energy while simultaneously saying that we don't want to get our hands dirty with it uh, in our state? Is, that, is it ethical? Is it ethical? Put me on the hot seat. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, okay. it's, it's one country. It's certainly ironic. It is ironic. It strikes me as, as eyebrow raising. So um, we'll leave it there. Heather Goldstone, thanks for being here. Sean Corcoran, thanks for being You're here. Welcome. Thank you, Adam.